Today we're going to sing Heart Fire Soldier. I am a heart fire soldier and I'm on the Southside Church of Christ here in the city, beautiful of Orlando, Florida. We're thankful, glad, and happy to have this privilege and this pleasure on a weekly basis to come before you in this platform, this setting, via live stream, uh, via Southside YouTube, via Southside Facebook, that we can just talk and discuss uh, and we can uh, elevate our biblical IQs together in an effort to get a more perfect understanding of God's book, the Bible, so we become better citizens of his kingdom, the church. It's an exciting time to be a Christian, exciting time to be a member of the Church of Christ, exciting time to be a member of the Southside 
Church of Christ. We are now in summer vacation mode. Our children will be going to uh, two more youth conferences this year, the Florida State Youth Conference in Fort Lauderdale, and then the Southeastern Youth Conference in Valdosta, Georgia. Pray for our children. They'll have a fun and festive time, and they continue to be good representatives of God, Jehovah, and of the Southside Church. I do want to petition you to keep praying for uh, those of our church who are still going through the, going through those whose life has been life in them. And there's other people today, but it may be you tomorrow. So pray for those who are stricken, those who lost loved ones, those who are bereaved, and those who have physical, emotional, psychological, and mental and financial difficulties at this time. It is our responsibility as a church to help one another, particularly in time of crisis. Tonight, beloved, I want to talk about a lesson entitled, How God Speaks. How God Speaks. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 20 declares, It is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Uh, we should be steadfast, unmovable in speaking the oracles of God. No preacher or teacher should speak his own words or her own words. We are simply to convey the Word of God. We ought to be conduits, not reservoirs, of the Word of God. We are to disseminate so then you can uh, digest this rich and beneficial Word of God. How does God speak? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. How does God speak? Now, in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, God spoke in a plethora of ways. You remember there's one occasion God spoke in the book of Exodus. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush, an audible voice from God. You remember Moses, Moses had gone off all day tending sheep on his way home. He noticed the same bush he saw was burning when he went uh, to the uh, pasture. The same bush was burning when he returned home. He said, I believe I'll turn aside and see this great sight. He came close to the bush, and God spoke out of that bush and told Moses, take off your shoes, for the ground you're standing on is holy ground. God, in the Old Testament, spoke to a bush. There was another occasion. God spoke to a donkey. Ask Balaam about that. The donkey. God spoke an audible voice through a donkey and instructed Balaam to get himself out of that street before calamity came his way. There was an occasion in Belchazer's palace. Uh, you find this in the book of Daniel, where God wrote by a mysterious hand on the wall. These, these are ways that God spoke in the Old Testament. But by the time we came to the era, the Christian dispensation, we came to the era of Jesus the Christ in the New Testament, God speaks now only through his word, the Bible. He speaks through his man, the preacher. Our job is to listen when God speaks. Make sure it's God that's speaking and listen and obey when God does speak. Know when it's God and then follow his directions. You know when it's not God. How do you know, Brother Leonard? When it don't line up with the Bible. That's how you know it's not God. When people come, yeah, you know, sometimes uh, there are spiritual flim flam artists out there. Uh, name it and claim it. Grab it and nab it. Uh, teaching you things that are not biblically correct, uh, biblically sound. When you cannot line up the Bible with what people are saying, then it's not from God. It's like a puzzle of the United States. All the pieces fit on the map. And when they don't fit, they, you know, they ain't 54 states. <laughs> and they ain't 42 states. So God's word is the same way. When people add to it, that's what John the Revelator said, don't add to the prophecy of this book and don't take away. So let's talk about when God speaks. How do we know? It's got to lined up. Got to line up with God's book, the Bible. Then that's God talking. When it don't line up with biblical principle, that's not God. Okay, so tonight, beloved, let's look and operate on the quick 
three quick umbrellas and it won't be long or exhausted tonight. But God is trying to speak to us. That's why you ought to be in Bible class every chance. You ought to have personal Bible study. You ought to be in a collaborative, uh, collective Bible class. You ought to be in Sunday school. You ought to study at home. You ought to study at church. Bible discussions. I know people that are in several Bible gatherings all week. You can't study too much Bible. You, you can't get an overdose of Bible. Okay? Um, because the more you study and the more you rehearse the Bible, the better you and I become. Just make sure you know it's God's word and somebody reliable and trustworthy that you know will never lead you astray from God's book. Matthew 15 said, if the blind be leaders of the blind, they both fall in the ditch. We see that in religion all the time now. Blind people leading blind people, and that's why we have so many spiritual ditches that people are falling into. Yeah, how does God speak? What mythology does God use? Hebrews 11 and 1, God in sundry times and in divers manners, Hebrews 1 and 1, God who in sundry times, that's past time, and in divers manners, that's different manners, spoke to our fathers by way of the prophets. But now in these, the last days, in the day after Jesus, is the last days. Now in these, the last days, he speaks to us by way of his son. God is speaking to us through his son, Jesus. His book, the Bible, being superintended by the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Godhead. So tonight, let's see how God speaks. First of all, God speaks to his people. God speaks to his people. Psalms 32 and 8. God speaks to us through his word. God speaks to us through divinely called ministers. God speaks to us through his providential means. And God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. Let's digest that slowly. He speaks through his word. That's the big umbrella, the book, the Bible. Everything we need to subsist upon. Everything we need to grow thereby. Everything we need to mature and modernity to set in. Everything we need to get from earth to glory is found in the Bible. God didn't hide it. God didn't make it a mystery, an enigma, a conundrum. Uh, you don't have to have an elaborate vocabulary. You don't have to have a PhD in theology. God did not make salvation complicated. If he did, only very, very educated people could understand it and obey it. No, he speaks to us through his word. And then he speaks to us through divinely called ministers, men of God, evangelists, preachers, pastors. He, he speaks to us through people. God himself is not going to come and talk to a donkey anymore. He's not going to talk to you through your alligator. He ain't talking to you through your Facebook or your Instagram. He talks to you through a divinely called anointed man of God. Yes, he speaks through people. He speaks to his people through people he's called to preach to his people. And yes, this is controversial for some. I don't know why. God speaks through providential means. Sometimes God can speak. You, you, everybody in here who's honest will confess this. Sometimes God speaks to us through a providential thing in your life. You know God's trying to tell you something. You know that what just happened is a message to you from God. He's trying to tell you to do that or don't do that. Leave here or stay here. Go there or don't go there. Providential means of God. Sometimes God speaks to me through providential means. I, I, how did I know that I should move to Orlando 25 years ago? I wouldn't sleep one night and God spoke in my right ear and said, yes, go to the south side. No. God lined things up providentially. He blocked another church I thought about going to in Alabama. He opened up this church, and even though it was smaller, with less people, less credentials, but he spoke, he lined the stars up. My wife didn't want to go to Alabama. My wife was amenable. 
uh, to Orlando. Uh, the situation in my life at the time at home, I realized that I could not probably grow to the point in the place that I believe I could be and that God wanted me to be. He spoke providentially. I couldn't find a Bible verse saying move to Orlando. I couldn't, I couldn't find a Bible verse saying Southside Church of Christ is the place. But providentially, God speaks. Pro means to see before. You, you, you can always, providence means to see before. To see before. And so when God does something providentially, he allows us to see something that we've not seen before. And so God does speak through providential means. He speaks to his people. How do we know to buy property on Raleigh Street? How, how do we know the men to ordain as elders and deacons? God speaks to us. He's not going to come. How do you know who to marry and not marry? God's not going to come down and say, marry Leroy. No, he doesn't do that. He sets some, a method in place from which, you know, people are getting on there, you know, uh, God send me a husband. God's not going to send you no husband. God's not going to send you no wife. He lets you choose. He just gave you the parameters of how to choose one. How? Godly, committed, uh, kind, generous, uh, hardworking, determined, faithful. He gave you some governance, but you get to choose. You know, well, he wasn't sent from God. Really, Sherlock? No, God they never, he don't pick your husband good or bad. He don't pick your wife. He gives you some rules for being a wife and then the choice is yours. He will speak to you providentially. That's God speaking to you. You went to dinner with him. His credit card declined the first time y'all went to dinner. You got seven children by nine women. He's speaking, no, it ain't legal. Don't do that. That's God speaking to you. Now, you don't have to listen. Again, everything God says to you may not be in the Bible. Okay? But everything you need for salvation is in the Bible. God not only speaks through his man, the preacher, God speaks through providential means. Some of you call it instinct. Some of you call uh, um, intuition. Uh, Sometimes God allows things. You get a hunt. You know that God is trying to tell me something. That's his spirit working in your spirit trying to direct you and protect you. And many times, many times, you and I both wish we'd have followed that spirit of God that was telling us to do this and don't do that. God speaks to us. See, we speak to God through prayer. God speaks to us through his word. That's why Jesus said again and again, hear, O Israel, because he wants us to listen when he's speaking to his people. We speak to God through our prayers. God speaks to us only through his word. His audible voice, he doesn't do that anymore. That's Hebrews 1 and 1. In times past and in different means and methods, he did that. Certainly he did in the Old Testament. But now he's speaking through God's word, his son. Jesus is the word, and the word is Jesus. In the beginning was God. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And John 1, 1, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. We speak to God through prayer. God speaks to us through his word. So tonight, how does God speak? First, he speaks to his people. And there's several methodologies he's chosen, including this providentially means to speak to us. Secondly, God speaks with his people. He speaks to his people, but he does speak with his people. We're a tandem, we're a team. See, some people will talk to you, but they won't talk with you. They only want you to hear what they got to say. I love that Isaiah said, God said to his people, come let us reason together. See, that's why some people dominate every conversation. I'm always leery of people you sit down, they, they, they never shut up. They talk the whole time. It's only what they say, how they say it. That's why many married people or people in a relationship don't get along. They think, well, I'm a good communicator. No, you're a good talker. 
Communication ha is a two-way street. Some people are good at telling you how they feel and what they want and what they need, but once they tell you, they don't want to listen to anything you got to say. I'm so glad God is not like that. God said, come let us reason together. Not only God talks to his people, he talks with his people. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, Truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says we have cornea together. We fellowship together. Come let us sup together. Let me in. God said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Let me in. Let us fellowship together. Let us discuss together. Let us have a daily comportment together. You talk to me through prayer. I remind you through my spirit, your word. God speaks to us through the avenue of fellowship. He, he speaks with his people, not just to his people. It's a good way to govern any relationship. I want to remind you, challenge you tonight. Don't just talk to people. Talk with people. Any substantive relationship is a two-way street. When you find a dominant person in a relationship that only is a one-way street of communication, that is not an effective relationship. No, God says, let's fellowship with God. God speaks to us as a friend. The Bible says that we, he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. God speaks to us as a companion, not a dictator. Jesus said, I'm your friend. What greater love has any man than this, Jesus taught us, that he would lay down his life for a friend. He said we're his friend. He says he's our big brother. He's our companion. He promised never to leave us nor forsake us. God said we're in this thing together. He does not just speak to his people. He speaks with his people. Oh, what a great way for you and I to govern the relationships in our life. Just take your cue from God. Yes, he speaks to us, and he's chosen different methods and means. It's just like we choose different methods and means to speak to each other. We verbally speak, but you do know the majority of communication that homo sapien men have with each other, women and men have together, is nonverbal. So people say, I'm a good talker. Well, most of what we communicate with people is nonverbal. That's what God said. He's, most of what I'm trying to tell you is nonverbal. Okay? God speaks to us in a plurality of means, providentially, through his man, through his book, through his spirit. But not only, thank God, he just speaks to his people, he speaks with his people. He promotes fellowship, cornea, companionship with his friend, with his brother. We're little brothers to Jesus. He don't just want to have a dominant relationship over you. He wants to speak to you and with you. Last but not least tonight, God speaks through his people. He speaks to his people. He speaks with his people. He speaks through his people. Yes, Matthew 10 and 20 accents that point tonight. Yes, I know you mean, you think that he only speaks to the likes of people like me, ministers, evangelists, pastors, and preachers. Certainly he speaks to us on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis, a decade at a time, even a uh, half a century. Like I've been here at uh, Southside 25 years, a quarter of a century, a silver anniversary. Yeah, he speaks through me and elders and preachers and pastors and preachers. But he speaks through all of us. Our teachers, God speaks through them. That's why we must consult God, those of us who teach and preach. Ask God for direction and words of wisdom, a, a window and door of utterance that God can speak through his people. Men like me and you and you and I teach and preach the word of God. But then all Christians, God speaks through them. Yes, he does. Uh, it may not be verbally. You may not stand before an audience. You may not stand before a group. You may not have um, command a microphone, but God is still using you. You either help 
the spreading of the gospel? Are you hurt the spreading of the gospel? We all ought to ask for God's guidance and the God's direction that we can be read of men, even our action, our lives. God is speaking to us. Some Christians are so miserable and mad and cantankerous, uh, negative. And, and so people out in the world say, why would I want, if, if God do for me what he's doing for you, they say, I don't want none of that. I don't blame him. Yes, beloved, he speaks to all of us. He does. Uh, when you visit the sick, God is speaking through you. When you help the poor, God is speaking through you. When you witness on your job, when you witness to your family, when you share Jesus to a lost and dying sinful world, God is speaking through you. When you have a testimony about how God has brought you up, brought you out, brought you through, and God has delivered you, or God has made you happy in the midst of a storm, that you can't get out of. God is speaking to you. Miracles happen in people's lives when they see Christ in other people. Yes, when you take the posture and the position that God is using me to influence others. When you say what is the right thing, when you do what the right thing. Ask for God for guidance that I say the right thing at the right time in the right place to the right people that they can see Christ in me. That's why John the Baptist prayed that I must now decrease so Jesus can increase. Yes, beloved, God speaks to his people. This is how God speaks. There's at least three ways. God speaks to his people. He speaks through the Bible. He speaks through providential means. That's when the stars line up. You know that's God trying to tell you something. And you know it's God when it lines up with the Bible. Okay? Uh, God speaks through his spirit. God speaks through his men, his teachers, his ministers. And then not only God speaks to his people, God speaks with his people. I love this about God. He seeks to partner with us, yoke with him. Uh, companion with him, befriend us. We're in unison, step by step with God, not just to you, but with you. Because no meaningful relationship is dominated by one side. So God said, you can talk to me every day through prayer. God said, I can talk to you every day through my word and, your, and his spirit, the Holy Spirit. He speaks to his people. He speaks with his people, and then he speaks through his people. God is using you and you and you and you to be witnesses for him and his son Jesus and his kingdom, the church. God uses you to visit the sick. God uses you to help the poor. God uses you to be a peacemaker in the midst of a tumultuous situation. Yes, God speaks to us, God speaks with us, and God speaks through us. Shall we pray tonight? God, our Father, mindful, happy, and glad we are that we have your book, the Bible, that you speak to us in a variety of ways. Help us to be wise and prudent, diligent in our study, that we know when it's you speaking. We know when a man stands before us and gives us instruction. We know if that lines up with your word and the Holy Spirit. Now God help us to listen when you speak to us. Help us to be partners and companion when you speak with us. And help us to be good citizens that you can speak through us. This is our prayer and our hope tonight. In Jesus, your son we pray. Amen. Beloved, it's a joy and an ecstasy to share this book with you again called The Bible. Listen now, be with us this Sunday, like every Sunday at 10 a.m., Bible class, Bible study, Sunday school hour, 10 a.m., 4701 Raleigh Street. We have classes for all ages. Our 
the educational program is doing extremely well. We are pleased and happy with the direction um, that our education program is doing with our children all the way up to the adults. And then at 11 a.m., we have Sunday morning worship every Sunday, beginning at 11 a.m., joy and ecstasy and praise and adoration to God. Be there in purpose, uh, uh, in person at 11 a.m. every Sunday. If you can't, of course, watch us on via our live streams, our platforms, Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube, and then every Wednesday night, wonderful Wednesday in the Word. What a great time we have studying the book called the Bible. It's been a joy, a privilege tonight to instruct you from how God speaks to us. Good night and be blessed. Ain't nobody for it but ourselves. Jesus, he will make a way out. Oh, Jesus, the big soul thinks you just watch and pray. He don't need your help. Let him